Hi everyone and welcome to the first in the Cheer Bite Size series. This is a series of um, small snippets of information that may be useful to new and old farmers alike. So this particular um, episode is about um, monitoring your farming health and it uh, looks at some of the new um, features that are in the latest version of the um, Cheer Client GUI. Um, but before we go into them, um, I just want to give you a little bit of a, an update on my upgrade path um, to the latest um, version of the client. So um, as you know, version two came out in August of 2023. Um, I didn't upgrade at that point. Um, going through the cheer documentation, I saw there was a very large update, a lot in it, and I was very nervous and I wanted to wait to see if there was a patch. Um, sure enough, a month later, 2.0.1 uh, came out. Um, and so I was more comfortable at this point to upgrade. Um, so I upgraded directly from 18.2 to 2.01. And I did this on both my full node and my cold storage wallet with absolutely no issues at all. Um, as a matter of course, I always back up my Chia directory before I perform an upgrade and I keep that back up for a few days until I get comfortable that this uh, upgrade has done what it's supposed to and it's stable. Um, and it looks like a lot of other people are moving to 18.2. As we can see here, there's, uh, sorry, on to 2.01. 18.2 is dwindling down slowly. I've still got a few stragglers on 2.00. I'd be interested to know how they're getting on with that, whether there's any issues or not, which resulted in this patch coming out. But anyway, let's move on to um, having a look at monitoring farming health in this new um, new updates. There are a number of new features um, and a lot of good diagnostic information available to you on the on the GUI. So starting on the farm page, we've got the farm summary and we've got some uh, four items indicating your current farm health at the top banner here. First one, pretty self-explanatory. We all know what this means. Um, it should say synced all the time. If not, then you've got a problem, you know, your broadband could be down or or maybe you've had your machine off for a while and it's just catching up and um, syncing with the, the blockchain. Um, nothing new there, it's on the, um, the plot tab in the older versions of the client. They've just moved it into this area now to keep everything together. And then plots passing filter. This shows whether the correct number of plots are passing the filter according to the size of your farm. And you can hover over this for detailed stats and the total number of plots passing filter and the expected number of plots passing filter. Those two figures should be very close together to indicate your farm is working properly. Um, but if you see differences on there, it will probably be highlighted um, in a change to the status under this section. Now, here's a, a, an area that I had to research. This has always been a bit of a gray area to me here, missing signage points. And this is the third item on this on this header bar. Um, and you can see here in the particular screenshot I've taken off my system, there is a, a figure here and I'll explain why there's a counter going up there. Now, signage points are what are broadcast by the uh, Chia blockchain. Um, every 10 minutes, 64 signage points are broadcast and it's up to your system to respond to those um, and respond within a certain time frame. Now, this doesn't happen all the time, and that's what this indicator here is um, telling you. So um, it's expected to show a fewer per day um, from your farm. You know, this will never stay green all the time. You're expected to have it indicate a, a number from one to five a day. Um, and the reason for that is because that's an acceptable amount of signage points to be missed. Um, but what you need to make sure is that that number is not incrementing drastically. Um, so if you're getting numbers that where it's going up to 100 per day, um, this shows there are severe problems. And those problems could be problems with your network. Um, you're, you're suffering from outages. You're suffering from uh, broadband problems. Or it could mean the size of your farm is getting too big and your harvester is overburdened. And you need to think about spitting it out onto another harvester, some of your drives. So that's quite a a useful um, bit of information. Um, and there's a reset option if you hover over here so you can reset it. Um, and in the summary I do at the end of this uh, uh, slide deck, and um, we'll go through what, what you should really do with that. And then the final and fourth section of this header part is stale partials. 
<clears throat> so this is where your system is not responding to the the, the partials challenge is quick enough. Um, nothing to worry about if you're getting the odd stale partial. It's very similar to you know if you've been monitoring on on your pool pages, um, you'll see that occasionally you do suffer from um, stale partials. Um, but you know if you're getting more frequent ones and and this is showing a, a consistent problem, then you need to investigate it. And much in the same manner manner as the signage point problems. You know, it's network issues um, or outages that you're suffering from, or it could be, again, an overburdened harvester. Okay, moving on to the next page. So this is the also on the farming page, but this is the pool health um, sort of section. Once again, four elements of information across here. So you've got valid partials. So this is the number and percentage of um, partial proofs that have been successfully returned to your pool by your by your harvester. Um, so you know if if you're not a hundred percent, and it starts going down the other way, then you need to investigate why that is, and that could be once again similar problems, um, overburden harvester, and some network issues that you need to investigate. And I've got a few suggestions for some things at the end of this uh, slide deck. Stale partials, all right, so this is the number and percentage of partial proofs that have not been returned to your pool in that adequate time. Um, so once again, you can see here, everything's tickety-boo here, all good. Um, I'm not suffering with any uh, stale partials being passed back to the pool. Invalid partials, that's the number and the percentage of partial proofs that have been returned to your pool is invalid. So occasionally you will get invalid um, hashes in your in your plot files. Um, it's something if you read up on the CHIA documentation does occur. Um, I've not suffered with it at all myself. Um, everything seems fine and has seemed fine for the last year or so. But if you do start suffering with problems because you're using third party plotting software, um, it could indicate an issue and be highlighted here. Missing partials, right? This is the number of percentage of partial proofs that your full node didn't return at all to the pool. Um, so if it's not returning at all, um, something's going something's going wrong. You're not even getting the communication through to be you know identified as a stale or invalid. It's just not getting there at all. So that's quite handy to have. Um, and you're looking for all green here as, as well. Um, if this does start creeping up um, and you want to monitor it daily, they've you know provided a reset um, option for this whole section so that you can. Uh, Put it back to normal to make sure you know you fixed a problem and it's no longer occurring which is is very useful all right this this section you'll be very familiar with because it has been in previous versions of the client but i just thought i'd go through it anyway as part of this because um i fell foul of a uh, an issue um, and didn't notice it in this section and i should have done so i thought i'd share that with you um so the challenge hash column, yeah, we're familiar with that. The date column, yes, fine. But plots pass filter. So every time a signage point is broadcast, those 64 per 10 minute, um, a number of your plots will pass the filter. Um, and the numerator value here is dependent on the size of your farm that indicates how many have passed the filter. And what's important here is the denominator, this number here, 1278. That is the size of my farm. I didn't notice, but I'd added new drives to my farm um, with extra plots. And this number didn't increase, but I didn't spot it. Um, and it was down to an issue, which I'll discuss at the end of this slideshow. So this is always a good thing to look at. Be familiar with how many plots are in your farm and just keep an eye on this. Um, the proofs found column. Right, So this is the total number of valid proofs found at the signage point. Um, so for pool farmers, a number greater than zero indicates that a valid partial proof was found and has been returned to your pool. This could result in you winning a block and getting your 0.25 XCH. Um, for pool farmers, it pretty much says, yes, you have, you've got a potential block win. Block win, sorry. Moving on, onto the harvester page now and the new harvester latency graph, which I love. Um, so by default, this graph shows the last 64 signage points. So there's a 10 minute window there, one to 64. You can change this 
up here with this drop down you can say right show me for the last hour 12 or 24 hours so you know it gives you a good view of what's been going on with regards to response times from your harvester and you can hover over an individual bar and you'll get um, details of that actual response time for that signage point which is handy um, so up here we get some information we get the average and maximum value in milliseconds or seconds in case of some of mine that your node has responded to one of those signage points that have been broadcast and it's this calculation here is obviously based on the um, period that has been selected in this drop down on the right here um, so partial submissions um, they must be submitted in response to a blockchain signage point within the blockchain time window which is 28 seconds so as long as you're not creeping up towards that you should be okay i mean it my average is milliseconds but my max was two seconds here um nothing to worry about um it looks drastic on this graph because at this particular point in time there was an issue with my network that caused a delay um and i'll be honest with you i think it was me playing around with some patch cables in my data cabinet and just switching a few things around and it went whoa it's taken a bit longer than expected. Um, I was very quick with it, but not quick enough. Um, and you'll see this if you, you know, decided to just disconnect a, a network cable or so and then plug it back in, it would be highlighted on this graph as being a period where the signage point couldn't be responded to quick enough. Um, so this is a fairly healthy latency graph. Um, and just to give you an idea of my, my farmer, it's um, an Intel Core i7-6700 with 32 gig of RAM, uh, Windows 10. Uh, obviously, these times might differ slightly on a, you know, if you're doing a Raspberry Pi 4, you might see an increase on these. If you've got a much faster machine, it might, and better network capabilities, you might see it uh, decrease here. But um, this is a pretty good, um, acceptable system. Okay, so after having a look at those, there are a few things we can consider. Um, the first is to reset your missing signage points daily. If that number's going up daily, um, reset it daily so that you can identify issues quickly on a particular day. Um, you know, if you just let it grow up, grow up over time, that number's going to increase. You're not going to know where you are. You're not going to know what the state of your system is. So this would be a good practice to get into. Um, and monitor your signage points and stale partials for early warnings of network issues or overburden hard harvesters if you've you know recently added more drives to your to your system. Keep an eye on the plots pass filter. Right, that denominator should be your total plot count. If it's not, it could be you've got a network fault, a drive failure, a drive mapping failure or issue, or as I suffered from, an incorrectly configured plot. So what had happened is somehow an incorrect pool contract address had um, entered its way into my configuration when I started plotting um, using uh, the command line and that resulted in me creating some plots that weren't recognized by my uh, harvester machine and even though I thought they had been added to the farm they actually hadn't um, and what resulted was that I wasn't seeing my sort of overall daily XCH earnings rise um, in conjunction with that. So keep an eye on that, that figure, especially if you're regularly adding to your farm. Um, and monitor that latency graph. You know, identify any periods where there is an increased or unexplained latency. Um, and these could be down to loads of different things. Um, even, you know, if you've got a virus scanner on that machine, it's popping in and doing its virus scan at a certain time on a schedule, that is going to have an effect on that graph and you will be able to see it because the virus scanners take up quite a bit of a CPU. Um, now what I did um, to make sure that I was getting the best out of my harvester machine and uh, make sure that there was not a lot of other things that were using the network, you know, behind my back, let's say, um, to impede on my, the performance of my system, I ran a, a program that I got and downloaded called ONO Shut Up 10. Uh, 
The reason it's called Shut Up 10 Plus Plus is because it works on Windows 11 as well. And this is a tool that gives you um, details of other things that can be on your Windows machine that, you know, through the normal Windows interface, you don't have access to uh, deactivate. But, um, you know, through some, uh, th through the interface of this application and some um, uh, registry updates, it can turn those things off. And it's quite an eye opener um, when you get the program and have a look and see what's turned on by default, stuff that you don't need, especially on a, you know, a, a Windows PC that you're using for harvesting, and not for anything else. So I was able to shut off a lot of things using that application. Um, and a lot of those things were doing unwanted communications behind the scenes um, for Microsoft data gathering and stuff like that. And if you run Process Monitor, you can see a lot of these things happening on your machine. Um, what this tool does is allow you to turn a lot of that off and free up your network so it's you know primarily used for your your harvester and not everything that Microsoft wants to collect. Now, as with anything, don't take my recommendation on this application. I did my research on it, um, a lot of research before I downloaded it and used it, but I have found it a very useful tool. And I have uh, not only run it on my harvester, but also on my cold wallet. And I have also run it on my desktop day-to-day um, -day machine as well. Okay, so that's the end of uh, this first uh, Chia Bite Size, Bite Size episode. Um, I hope there was some useful information in there, something you didn't know or um, you know, something that uh, will make you think for the future about uh, monitoring your farm health. Um, so please uh, like and share if you enjoyed the video. Obviously, thumbs down if you didn't. And consider subscribing and helping the channel and hitting the bell notification icon. But thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you next time.